Bill Bryansky is the executive board member for the Ukrainian Congress Committee for America. He joins us now in the studio. And I asked you a second ago, is it that corrupt? Your response was? My response was, is yes, it is. Uh, the people have been tired of the corruption. The amount of money that Yanukovych and his family, the Klan, has gathered. His, de his son, a dentist, has a net worth of $6.5 billion, which he has amassed in the last five years. That can't be right. That's a lot of fillings. That's a lot of fillings, you're right. I want to show you something that was mentioned on Sunday. National Security Advisor Susan Rice speaking on Face the Nation. Take a listen to what she had to say. It's not in the interest of Ukraine or of Russia or of Europe or the United States to see the country split. It's in nobody's interest to see uh, violence return and, and the situation escalate. We keep hearing this talk about the West being uh, associated with the EU, the East being associated with Russia. Some say it needs to be a divided country. Your thoughts on that. Can there be a united Ukraine that talks to both Russia and the EU? Yes, absolutely. The uh, uh, Ukrainian people are, are united in this in a generational divide. What we're talking about is not Russians versus Ukrainians. We're talking about Soviet identity, a Soviet culture in the East that is dying off year by year, which is why Putin and... But and not his, yet. Yes, not yet. But then you, uh, if you talk about Odessa, for instance, is being in the South as a stronghold of that Soviet identity. Yesterday, there were 4,000 mourners who uh, demonstrated for the people who died on the Maidan. If you look at uh, Donetsk and Dnipropetrovsk and Kharkiv even, those people as well, they're protesting for the spirit of democracy. What you see uh, holding the line are people who have banners not of the Russian flag, but of the Soviet flag. In, uh, just on your footage yesterday, I saw in front of the statue of Lenin that still stands in Kharkiv, uh, the Slava glory to the Soviet army. They're not talking about Russia. They're talking about a past, a past that does not exist. Is it your sense that they are opposed to the European Union, or is it your sense that those who live in the East are afraid it's of the old Soviet Union? You've got it just right, Dell. It's, it's propaganda. It's, uh, it's uh, people uh, like the uh, Russian foreign ministers talking about uh, the war of 1709, the Battle of Poltava, and this is some kind of Polish-Swedish conspiracy theory to get back at a 300-year-old uh, battle. These are all stories that are told to people who are frightened in the East, and they're, they've been frightened for years about NATO, and that's why they haven't been engaged in this process. Frankly, the younger people over there, they've been involved in the process. They want a better future, and that's what's happening now. We have seen this before, and I'm speaking specifically about Libya. I'm thinking about Egypt, where there are popular uprisings in the streets. There is a call for democracy. There is a stepped-up effort to get the either the United States or the European Union involved. And then two years later... Mm -hmm chaos. Are you concerned now about Ukraine? Everybody's concerned. Uh, just yesterday, our pop star, Ruslana, who's been on the stage every day for the last 90 days, she uh, put out a tweet saying, I'm, I'm very scared about having deja vu about the Orange Revolution. This is what happened in the Orange Revolution. We had a change of power, and all of a sudden, things went downhill again. We're talking about people uh, trying to keep the Maidan spirit going. Uh, there was a post uh, from uh, Svetoslav Vakarchuk, who said, instead of pictures of the president, we should have pictures of the dead of Maidan in everybody's office to remind them what we're fighting for here. We're fighting for a better future for Ukraine. We're not fighting for having uh, ourselves aggrandized and become popular politicians. But there has been an arrest warrant and it is being prepared now for Viktor Yanukovych, the president. Yes. Can you move forward when you get ready to put the former president on trial, who was also very popular in the eastern part of Ukraine? Absolutely. This was the problem that happened in 2004 and 2005. Uh, in this country, people might understand the analogy of Richard Nixon. He resigned uh, and did not seek further power but after Ford that. But Ford pardoned him because he said he did, he did. not want what would happen if Nixon was put yeah. on trial. But after that, Nixon did not uh, run for any further political office. And what happened in 2004-2005 is that uh, Yanukovych was allowed to not be prosecuted for trying to steal the election and a bunch of other dubious crimes that happened at that time. And at that point, he decided to run for prime minister, rebranded himself with Western political consultants, and, uh, and uh, achieved the status of prime minister, and then e easily the, uh, the presidency after that. So what would happen, has to happen now is definitely a prosecution of this man for crimes against humanity. This is not just a Ukrainian problem anymore. In fact, the, the, there have been uh, whisperings in, in Hague about having a tribunal of having the crimes that are uh, prosecuted right now. Andrei Dobryansky, he is the executive board member for the Ukrainian Congress Committee in America. Thanks for being with us this morning. Thank you, Joe.